good morning. Hello, we are going to be attempting a 24 hour reading challenge. This is one of those 24 hour reading challenges that is responsible. <laughs> There's kind of two types. There's the one where you do it from like 10 a.m. Monday to 10 a.m. Tuesday and you stay up all night. You destroy your circadian rhythm for the sake of views, which is fine. I respect that. There's another method that I think is more my speed, where you just time the amount of time that you read for a couple of days and when that adds up to 24 you're like yeah I did it. I think this approach is much more successful if what you want to do is actually read for actually 24 hours. That way the time that you're eating and sleeping and other things it's not eating into your time so i have four days off of work i'm gonna try and do it in three but i have four so we'll see where we're at on day three it's either eight hours a day for three days or six hours a day for four days and this is the stack this is the this is the stack of books actually let me first show you what i'm currently reading i'm currently reading some poetry we got Sylvia Plath and we got Mary Oliver. These are mostly for when I'm trying to sleep and I can't sleep. I found poetry is good because it doesn't like, my brain isn't like excited about a narrative and I can just kind of focus on the words and not what's happening, you know? So I got these two. I may dip into these two at some point if I need to. And then I have <laughs> the Count of Monte Cristo and I don't think I'll touch this because I think this would take me about 24 hours to finish the whole thing and I want to start and finish books to keep me motivated. I kind of want to take my time with this and read it properly. So let us discuss my TBR stack. I don't think I'm gonna get through all of these. I don't know how fast I read though, so maybe I will. There is a lot here though, so probably not. We have Light Boxes by Shane Jones. I picked this up at an upshop for a dollar because it was cute and small. <laughs> we got China Mayville. This I think is just an essay about London and it's got lots of photos. T.S. Eliot, very thin volume. I've never read any T.S. Eliot so that will be interesting. Also Walt Whitman, I've never read any Walt Whitman. This is his like poem, right? <laughs> the big one. The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. Look at this beautiful spine. I just finished A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway so I'm a bit Hemingwayed out at the moment. I do enjoy his work. Hopefully this one's less tragic. Slaughterhouse Five. I don't know anything about this other than that it's like an anti-war book and the cover's cool. Just picked this out because it was kind of short-ish. Give Night by Ali Weissel. This is my book for Romania, but it says in the back he was born in Hungary, so Hungarian slash Romanians, let me know what's up. Into Thin Air. This is about the 96 Everest tragedy. An event that I am like too knowledgeable about. I've watched like many documentaries and I'm just kind of morbidly fascinated by people climbing a mountain and then like suffering the consequences. Everest is wild to me. I would never climb it myself but it's very fascinating the psychology of people who do. We have a Maureen Johnson book. I have been a nerd fighter for approaching 10 years and I have never read a Maureen Johnson book. I feel like this is a sin. I need to recognize this immediately. This was at an op shop, so I bought it. It was three dollars. I don't really know what this is about. We'll dip in. We'll see what we think. The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society. I found this in a book box in one of those little libraries. I don't know. I've heard good things. It sounds quite interesting. We have an Agatha Christie. I think I do know the plot of this one. I don't think I've ever actually fully read an Agatha Christie. I would love to do that. I've watched a lot of like Poirot. This is a strong candidate. And I have a graphic novel for when my brain gets tired and wants pretty pictures instead of pretty words. I have read this before, but it was a long time ago. So I would be very happy to read this again. I think this will be good in between books. So that's the stack. I would imagine we will not read all of it. <laughs> Part of this I want to time. I'll like time myself on a stopwatch and I'll lap each book and then I'll calculate afterwards pages per hour or words per minute or whatever. My reading speed for each book uh, and then my reading speed like overall just to know because I don't know and that would be useful information to have and I think maybe quite interesting. So that is the stack. We're gonna go to the library. I have a book in on hold. I don't know what it is. Um, I think it's probably Soviet milk. I think it's my Latvia book for my around the world challenge. Uh, it could also be my Angolan book. We'll see. And then I'll pick out maybe some, some graphic novels or some short nonfiction or something interesting. Hello, here is what I got at the library. I got a Stephen King book. I have read 
a Stephen King book before, but I was like 14 and it was the second Mr. Mercedes book and I didn't realize it was the second book and I was like, hmm, there seems to be a lot of backstory here that I don't understand. How odd. I remember I think I liked it. Anyway, this is a novella. It's quite short. I think this will be good, fast-paced. Uh, I imagine it's a bit scary, we'll see. I got two books, one for Germany, one for Latvia. This one is brand new, I ordered it in at the library, they didn't have it. I don't know if I'll get to these in this 24 hour challenge, but I will get to these probably within the next few weeks. And then I did pick up a graphic novel, I got Spinning by Tilly Walden, because this was the only thing they had that wasn't like manga or Marvel comics. But I've heard good things about this, it looks really cool. Should be a nice quick-ish read. <laughs> Halfway Through The Mist by Stephen King. Um, it's fine. <laughs> it's about this like guy and there's a storm and then after the storm he goes to the supermarket with his kid and then there's this crazy mist. Everyone freaks out and in the mist is evil tentacles that eat people. It's quite exciting. <laughs> Two hours and eight minutes in. I am just about finished with this book. I've got maybe 20 pages left. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. It's, you know, it's at least a solid three stars, I think. At present, we'll see how it ends. There's not really enough time left for a happy resolution, so I'm excited to see all the grisly deaths that I think are about to happen. And then, I don't know what we'll pick. Thinking maybe Agatha Christie, but also maybe Into Thin Air. I have soccer training though, so we're gonna have to take a little break, but then I have all night and, um, I'm excited, I'm excited. read for six hours 42 minutes we finished the mist by stephen king and into thin air by john coco this was quite good i quite liked it all the characters i hated <laughs> they were very like one-dimensional i really don't understand why our protagonist needed to cheat on his wife after less than 48 hours that just seemed weird like maybe you're trying to express the dianus of the situation but i think you've done that in other ways that were less like, what? I, I didn't understand that. Then we have this. I think this was a little bit longer than it needed to be. There was a lot of background, but I suppose for someone who doesn't know anything about Mount Everest, it's probably necessary background, and I imagine a lot of people don't know anything about Mount Everest. So the first, like, half was kind of not actually about a 96 disaster, but more about all the people involved and all the previous expeditions and the history of the mountain and stuff, which was cool, but, you know, not kind of what I'm here for. Oh, but then we got to, then we got to May 10th and it was wild. Like, Rob Hall and Doug Hansen always make me cry. Beck Weathers always makes me, like, question everything. Like, how? It's crazy. It's crazy. Never climb a mountain. It's ridiculous. Anyway, so then I picked up, I picked up live boxes, but I didn't start it. I was like, I think I'm done for the day. So this is what we are going to read first today, and then I don't know what's next, but I don't imagine this will take me particularly long.
may be the weirdest book I've ever read. I don't really know what's happening. Um, I mean, it's interesting, I suppose. Hello. Hello. I feel truly awful. <laughs> I read for about an hour this morning and then I just fell asleep. Because I am chronically ill. I don't know. Is it chronic fatigue or is it just because I stayed up till God knows when reading about people climbing mountains and being sad. Who knows? Anyway, the point is, I feel terrible. We're going to the supermarket for snacks. <laughs> gonna get some morale boosting snacks and then we're gonna read for the rest of the afternoon. This might be time for one of the graphic novels, to be honest. We might pick up spinning. I finished Light Boxes. It was weird as hell. I think I'm just gonna give it three stars because, like, I didn't really enjoy it, but I do want to encourage absurdity. Right. We got the goods. I don't know if Purple Gatorade. It's Powerade. I don't know if purple Powerade is the solution to my problem, but it kind of matches my book. So, all right, we're gonna start reading now. I think I may have to opt into the uh, six hours a day for four days thing now, because we're kind of on the struggle bus. Maybe I'll have a great day tomorrow and read for like 12 hours, but no pressure. Just calm down and everything's gonna be okay. good i enjoyed it i'm very glad i'm no longer in high school it is agatha christie time i do believe i've read about two hours today about eight or nine hours in total i think so this should knock out at least probably three or four so i'll finish this tonight probably and then maybe start something short-ish like uh the hemingway book or something i also want dumplings <laughs> Hello, it is the beginning of day three. Let's do a recap on yesterday. So yesterday, in the morning, I read for an hour. I read Light Boxes. Then the afternoon, I read Spinning by Tilly Walden. That took about an hour too. And then last night, I started and finished. And then there were none by Agatha Christie, which was excellent. It did not take me as long as I thought it would. I thought, you know, that's not an unsubstantial book. But it only took me like two hours, I think. Then I started The Old Man and the Sea and I got about halfway. So that's where we're at. 12 hours and 11 minutes going into day three. So we're in a good spot. We're on schedule. So today's first order of business is to finish this. And then, then we'll pick something for my rapidly shrinking TBR, which maybe I wasn't super ambitious with it because we're kind of half-half now. There is a big graphic novel in this one, obviously. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Hemingway has destroyed me for the second time this month, and it is only February 9th. We're gonna start this, I think. Set in World War II, or just after. It is 12 or 5 p.m., so we still have all afternoon. I'm very pleased with our progress. I honestly think we can read all of the books that I wanted to read. This is probably the biggest one left, so we'll see how long this takes. It is only like, it's less than 300 pages still, I think. Hello, I just went to the op shop. I have some exciting developments. I have a Vanuatu shirt necessary for my challenge uh <laughs> and a real madrid training shirt for soccer training um i'm a brentford fan i don't know who my spain team is i don't think it's real madrid but it was too cool to not get so i found another agatha christie we may read this later on because um i did enjoy and then there were none so the possibility. I got a thriller that I don't really know much about but looked kind of interesting. And then, you won't believe this, it's amazing. You know my copy, my my, my cool 1952 copy of uh, The Old Man and the Sea that I like just finished reading? Um, it has a dust jacket that it is clearly missing. <laughs> this was just at the off shop. I was like, what? How? Hello? Um, but it's the same edition though. 
It's the same, it's the same edition, but it's got this really pretty cover. So I had to buy this just with the dust jacket. I just got up to part two of the of the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. Am I enjoying it? Ugh. It's a bit of a slower read, and I think at this point in a readathon, I'm like 15 hours in or something. Uh, I probably would have been better off going for something a bit more fast-paced because the energy's low, morale is not super high. It is very like cozy and comfy and there's weird interesting characters in a weird interesting place but i'm just not really super feeling it at the moment so i'm gonna take a break i'm gonna take a break given we've hit part two and i'm gonna go for this tiny little china mayville essay novella thing which i imagine will take no time at all and will help to break things up i don't even know what this is <laughs> it's about five or six o'clock in the afternoon i'm not sure so we will finish this tonight but i want to take a little break read something short and sharp and different. <laughs> Hello, I just finished London's Overthrow by China Mayville. Worthwhile reading, but very bleak. <laughs> and before I, before I finish the lit, uh, lit, Guernsey, what is it called? Before I finish the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society, I'm gonna make some amendments to my TBR. I don't really super feel like a young adult theatre New York situation. So we're gonna sub in the Agatha Christie book that I just got at the op shop. Sorry, Maureen, I will get to you one day. And then I'm gonna get rid of T.S. Eliot and Walt Whitman because I just feel like they require a bit of brain power and we're a bit low on that at the moment. And I'm gonna bring in the Sylvia Plath that I'm already reading, and then also Fantastic Mr. Fox. So, as the night approaches, we have half of this book remaining. We then have- this is the- this is the stack we've got, so... Uh, yeah, I don't really- I don't know what I'm in the mood for after that, so... We'll just pick whatever we want when we get there. <laughs> day four, the final day, before we get down to business, I have a package. These are for a future video. Spoilers. Yesterday, I finished The Old Man and the Sea. I finished The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. I finished London's Overthrow. And then I got uh, about a third of the way through The Moving Finger by Agatha Christie. This brings us to a total of 18 hours, 45 minutes, which means that five hours, 15 minutes left. So we will finish this and then we'll just smash out as many of our smaller books as we can. And uh, that'll then we'll be done. I've just finished The Moving Finger by Agatha Christie. I think um, that I am an Agatha Christie fan. But yeah, they're really good and they're really quick and like easy to get through. Very uh, hilariously British, just so aggressively British. Yes, so I did, I enjoyed this and we'll see, we'll see what's next. I've only got like three and something hours to go. Hello, I'm very tired, so we're going for a walk. Yeah! <laughs> the crazy boy. Look at him go. <laughs> to my strawberries. I've got some more over here. Oh, there's more. Yeah, there's more. Are you red? We're starting Slaughterhouse Five. I've never read any Kurt Vonnegut, so don't really know what to expect. It's pretty short. I should add. I, I don't know how long it'll take. Maybe an hour and a half. <laughs> Yeah.
I'm the Uberman. Hello. I did it. 24 hours. 10 books. Plus a little bit of this. Uh, I would call that a success, I think. Let's quickly, let's quickly talk about what I read. I don't want to keep you for too long. We started with The Mist. Stephen King. Short, sweet, thrillery, horror -y thing. Into thin air. Tragic. <laughs> uh, read if you want to be sad. Light boxes, a very weird time, uh, but a very short time. Spinning. Uh, pretty pictures, very nice. And then there were none was my first Agatha Christie and an excellent Agatha Christie. This one was a little more far-fetched. I like it when it's solvable. This was... I don't know if this was solvable, man. The Old Man and the Sea. I enjoyed it, but it was very sad. This book that I have incorrectly said the title of several times. Um, it was cool. It was interesting. It was a bit slower than I wanted it to be. London's Overthrow. Cool essay about 2011 London and its many flaws. The Moving Finger. Uh, excellent Agatha Christie novel. I will be scouring secondhand shops for more of her titles. So it has five. Five stars. I was like, am I gonna read this many books and not find a five star read? This is it. It is bonkers. I loved it. It was, it was so weird. And then half an hour of this. I do enjoy Sylvia Plath. So that's the stack. Let's talk briefly about reading speed as well because I did, I did take note of that. So pages per hour for each of them. For the mist, 73 pages per hour. For Into Thin Air, 75 pages per hour. Light boxes I won't count, spinning I won't count. And then there were none, was 100 pages per hour. It's pretty well spaced and like, the font is large-ish, but that's still pretty fast, I think. I think I was just very into it, I don't know. The Old Man in the Sea, 86. The Guernsey Potato Society, <laughs> 70. The Moving Finger, 102. So, Agatha Christie, rapid. So it has five, only 56 pages per hour. Uh, classics be classics, man. No double spacing. Tiny font. So my average pages per hour was 97 and a half. Uh, but that's, I think, because there was some graphic novels and that kind of thing. Total number of pages read, 2,340. And then words per minute. This was harder to do because a lot of books don't have word counts easily findable on the internet. Into Thin Air, the words per minute was 429. This, I think, is a little inflated because I kind of skim read the last... Mm, 40 pages because it was just a afterword that I wasn't particularly interested in. And then there were none. It was 335 words per minute. The Old Man on the Sea, 303. The Moving Finger, 324. And then Slaughterhouse-Five, 272. Because classics be classics, man. I don't know what the moral of that story is. I think the moral of that story is I read roughly 75 pages per hour given any average book. I'm roughly 320-ish words per minute, which I think is pretty average, I don't know. So that is that. That was that was the 24-hour uh, reading challenge. I had a great time. I don't know about you. So thank you very much for watching, and I will be making more videos soon, so stick around. Now go!